Hi, and welcome to the question two of the 2019 paper one Leaving Cert Ordinary Level. As usual, if you want a copy of the set of notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And that email address should be in the description below. So question two here is the complex number question. Usually, you're fairly sure you're going to get a complex number question. I like them. Okay, they're easily practiced and get used to the different methods that they're going to be asked, the different skills. So this part A here, there's two parts, and together they're worth 10 marks. Usually with these kind of questions, if you can get one part fully correct, you're going to be up here at the high partial. So that's, I think, fairly I'd say generous, but it's good for us. So the complex number uh, you're given here, now they, they often use Z or U or W, whatever. In this case is Z, and it's just the real part of the complex number and the imaginary part. For ordinary level, I wouldn't be worried about what complex numbers actually are. You're just trying to prove that you can follow the method to get this done. And again, they're fairly straightforward if you practice them. So let's look at it from that focus. If you want to delve in deeper about what complex numbers are, there's loads of online videos that will try to explain it. But it is a, say, a hard concept. It's very, very interesting, very, very useful in more advanced maths. But it's, it is what it is. So now this complex number, um, when you, if you plot them on what's called an Aragon diagram, okay, that's this thing here, the equivalent to the y-axis is called the imaginary axis, and the equivalent to the x-axis is, is called the real axis. And complex numbers can be plotted on this to represent them. So it's just like a Cartesian coordinate or an x-y coordinate system, the, real, the first number here, the real part, is equivalent to the x, and the imaginary part is equivalent to the y. So this is the point two on the x, or two on the real, one on the imaginary. So it's there, okay? Now, they give you that, and they say in part one, they want you to plot z2, and z2 is the same thing as twice z1. So basically, you're doubling this. If you double it, well, two twos is four, two i's is two i, okay? Same thing as two plus x, if you double it, it would be four plus x. 4 plus 2x. So I should go straight to the answer here. Okay, so I've done that multiplication here just to show it. But again, once you've shown that, you're up here, you've got you're off the ground, you've got marks. You just want to get more marks. Okay, so if you can get this full part correct, again, usually you're up at the 8. So the 4 plus 2i is 4 in the real. So it's 4 in the real is along this line here. Crisscrossing with 2 on the imaginary. So that's where the point z2 is. Uh, they say in the second part of part A that Z bar, okay, or the um, or the conjugate of Z1, okay, is um, 2 minus I. So you take your, your, your complex number, 2 plus I, and you basically just change the sign in front of the, the imaginary part. So it was plus, so now it's imaginary. Or now, sorry, now it's minus. The conjugate is always directly below or above the complex number and will be the same distance away from the origin. Okay. So the only place it can be is the point directly down here. So it's two minus I and I've labeled that as Z bar. Okay. Um, and they do say label it. So it's important to get, make sure it is labeled. If you didn't label it, there might be a one mark reduction or so, some, some equivalent to that. So it's part A. Now part B here, it says, find the distance of Z2 from the origin. It's often called the modulus. Uh, is the modulus of Z2 the same as the modulus of Z1 added to uh, the conjugate of Z1? Okay, so we can't tell if it is or not until we actually physically do it and show it. There's a lot of work in a question like this, so make sure you organize your work well. So the modulus formula here is this, and it's basically a rearranged version of Pythagoras. If I just go back a page, okay, if that's Z2 there, we're basically trying to find this distance here. Let's use the awkwardness of drawing that. Now, the idea is you're getting this triangle. Okay, it's a right angle triangle. It's supposed to be straight. Um, and you're looking for the, for lack of a better word, the hypotenuse. Okay, so one side squared plus the other side squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. You see it there. The only thing that's different is they brought the square across the equal to square root everything on the far side 
and that creates the modulus formula. So really it's just a rearranged version of Pythagoras. They can do this different ways. You can do rough work over the side and then bring your answer and just represent it over on the on the, the other side. I've done here is one kind of big, huge calculation. And I put in the complex number for Z2, which we said was 4 plus 2i. And then the complex number Z1 is 2 plus i. We were given that, plus the conjugate complex number we got, which is 2 minus i. Now, it's worth pointing out here. Let's say, for some reason, you knew how to do the modulus. But in part A, 1 and 2, you just just had a brain fart. And you, you didn't know what to, what to put down. Make up an answer. If you use an answer from a previous part in a future part, it's assumed to be correct from that part. You won't get any marks necessarily for part 1 and 2. But you'll get full marks if you do correctly for part 3. And that's throughout both papers. And it's a, it's a useful thing to you know, try garner more marks. Because the argument would be, you know, if you know how to do part three, you shouldn't be penalized because of part one and two. So you're always been trying, you're trying to reward the candidate for every little bit of work they do that's relevant towards the answer. That works in your benefit a lot of the time. So I'm going to do it here, okay? So I'm just simplifying this statement before I do any modulus finding. Two plus two is four. I take away I is, no, is zero, it's gone. So technically I can leave that blank. So we're kind of saying, what's the modulus of 4 plus 2i? Is that the same as the modulus of 4? Now, it's not going to be. You have to prove it to us. Um, so you use the modulus formula. I'm doing it on the left side and on the right side. So in this complex number, the um, 4 is the a value. The 2 is the b value. So you're, you're using the form here of a plus bi. Now, it's really hard to use a mouse uh, to write... Um, text but kind of represented it over here with the a and the br so i put the four in to the modulus formula instead of a i put the two in instead of b put the two in the calculator if you want whatever i end up with square root 20. and then i'm doing the right hand side so four squared um the four the b is zero so i represented that by putting it into the modulus formula again if you want to put it in the calculator or whatever um i end up with the square root of 16. The square root of 20 is a big long decimal. Okay, square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 20 is bigger than 4. So therefore they are not equal. Therefore that statement is not true. It's always worth stating, even though it's, like you could argue, obvious. Um, you might as well cover that and be sure to get it. So there's only five marks there. A lot of work for, for a small amount of marks, especially in comparison to what part A was. Now, part B here is the last 10 marks. I've given a hint with the quadratic formula. And you're given a, a if you say, a, f a root of this quadratic equation. And this is a specific thing that's done in complex numbers. But basically, it's the same as general algebra, where you're just solving a quadratic. It can't be solved using the faster methods. Um, and your or factorization, for, for lack of a better word and you're kind of forced down the route of using the quadratic formula. So at some stage here, you're going to end up with a square root of a negative number, and that's not allowed in maths, so therefore you have to have a slight different ending to a normal uh, quadratic equation uh, solution. So I'm going to use the minus b formula, so I'll probably have done it here. Okay, so that's the quadratic equation taken from the question. This is the general form of a quadratic equation. And then I'm using that to identify what the a value is. So the a is the number in front of the z uh, squared. Uh, the b is the number in front of the z, so it's minus 4. And c is the number at the end. So I've written those three numbers out. They're the three input, inputs to the quadratic formula. So I substitute them in. And I would suggest you always substitute a number in in brackets. That will help to make less errors. So I've written out my formula. Again, that's given to you in the maths tables. You're going to have to remember that that's something in, you, you need to use. But I would argue that you know, going into the exam, solving quadratics, if you're aiming to get a high mark, should be second nature. So when you see one, you're kind of going, okay, just a matter of doing. Um, as long as annoying as it is to have to do it, okay, it just has to be done. So I put my numbers in. So it's minus times negative four. Uh, plus or minus the big square root of 
minus 4 squared. Okay, minus 4 times 1 times 5. That's all divided by 2 times 1. And if we're having fully correct substitution into correct formula, you definitely have the 3. So the last thing then, I'm going to simplify what I can. So minus by minus changes that to a plus 4. And then I've simplified this now, I've just done it here. Um, but it's minus 4 squared is 16. Take away 4 times 1 is 4. Minus 4 times 5 is minus 20. So it's 16 take away 20. That's where I get the negative 4 from. And 2 times 1 is 2. And the negative 4, I have to deal with. I just copied this over. This is just literally copied from the, the, the last line just to make it obvious what I'm doing. I'm going to try to deal with the, net, the square root of negative 4. And this is the logic that we follow. And the basic gist is, in maths, if you want to say something, you can often express it in multiple different ways. Sometimes expressing it in a different way is not useful. Sometimes it is. So I can express negative 4 as the same thing as 4 times negative 1. So if I reverse it, it reverses back onto what it was. So as long as something's reversible, it should be mathematically correct. That's the kind of argument here. Then we're using one of the rules of powers, which says that the square root of two numbers multiplied is the same thing as those separate square roots mul multiplied. So I can separate that into the square root of four times the square root of negative one. Now square root of four is two. Okay, and that's where the two comes from here. The square root of negative one, in complex numbers, we call that i, because we, we can't have a square root of a negative number. And for the end of this video, already 11 minutes, I'm not going to go into the why that is, because that's the crux of complex numbers. What we're going to call the square root of negative 1, we're going to call it i. So that's where the 2i comes from. So I can basically swap the square root of negative 4, and I've shown there that that's the same thing as 2i. Now the last bit, okay, they don't actually say this, but they, want, they generally want the question uh, as simplified as possible. So I'm going to divide the 2 into the 4 and into the 2i. So 2 into 4 goes twice. And the plus or minus is there. I'm not going to bother dealing with that. I don't need to. 2 is a 2i. Half of 2i is 1i. Okay. So is 2 plus i one of the solutions or roots of this quadratic? Well, it is. The other one is 2 minus i. So it's true. It's verified, proven, whatever. We want to say that. I, in this case, pick the word verify. Right, we're at 12 minutes, so let's not dally. Uh, best of luck and see you on question three.